everybody, welcome to my channel. So please hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, and the notification button. It's your boy, Jessica. Hi, welcome to my channel. If you're new here, and welcome back. If you're coming back, thanks for clicking on my video. Today, we are discussing, or I felt like <laughs> discussing, I feel like sharing about my relationships. All of the relationships and probably situationships I've been in in my life and self-reflect on it so let's go boyfriend A met him at church I was like 12 13 around there and sweet, poor, innocent little Jess. You know, I honestly, throughout my entire adolescence, I was definitely boy crazy. I'm not proud of it, <laughs> but you know, it's a thing. It's just, it's a thing. And uh, my parents just never really had that kind of conversation about it with me. So all I was was just boy crazy. Didn't really know how, what to do with these emotions other than, you know, just I don't even know, be cringy and awkward all the time and doing cringy things to get boys attention. Ugh. Ugh. Anyway, boyfriend A, met him at church. And again, I was like 12, around 13, just to give you a good idea. I am going to be turning 28 this year. So in other words, 27 right now. And <laughs> oh, there is this dude, boyfriend A, went to, went to church. He is, was a little bit younger than me. And I actually didn't really care for him that much until like a friend of mine was just like, oh my God, I love him so much. He's so cute. And I was looking at him. He had this very like skater boy, long hair, straight, he would straighten his hair, skinny jeans, um, you know, that look. And initially, I didn't care for him, but anyway, later on, I was like, you know what, yeah, I guess he's kind of cute. Or we ended up talking somehow, I don't remember. Long story short, we got to talking, we had a relationship. Honestly, if I were to be more realistic, this entire relationship was basically a situationship, kind of, because it was very on and off. It was very unhealthy, even though it was, yes, a very young relationship, but an experience is an experience, so I'm not going to invalidate young Jessica's experience. And he was my quote-unquote first love, but um, from a very young adolescent point of view, my first love. And let's just say I definitely got my heart broken. A, 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 it was so good. So again, on and off, he had this really big crush on the popular girl in church and would rather date her than me, but I was like, second, it's like second best. <laughs> That's terrible. It doesn't matter. Anyway, so that situation ship went on for like, about four years on and off and self-reflecting on it again I was like I was an adolescent I really didn't know what I was doing and he was constantly giving me like mixed signals we really didn't like we didn't have much of a relationship all it was was texting back and forth and the texting whenever I used to go back and look at the messages it's so cringy Cr cringe like the I love you, L-U-V, -L letter U, or I heart you, with just letter U. Oh, just, I miss you. And just sh short messages that don't have any, nothing. There's nothing in these messages. It's just, <laughs> so bad. It's so cringy. So that went on. And uh, his parents didn't like me. My parents really didn't care for the idea of me having a thing for a boy and eventually I actually was like forbid not forbidden but like I was grounded from going to church because they didn't want me to see this man's sorry this boy's understandably so but no anyway like that was like how my mom and my parents would handle me and boys 
for the most part, I guess, at least with him. And, you know, I was just, I was very insecure. I grew up insecure. My attachment style is anxious attachment style growing up. So that gives you a better picture of the kind of person I was back then, my adolescence. <laughs> seeking validation from who I could because seeking validation from my parents just wasn't going very well. <laughs> It was not so great. <laughs> it was so good. And uh, that's a story for another time and another video. So fast forward, back then, very insecure, very ignorant, very oblivious, 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 oblivious young child. He actually cheated on me as well during the like period of I wasn't sure whether we were still together or not wasn't sure but apparently he made out with some girl on a dare and I found out from his brother and that night I, I still remember that night clearly to this day I read that message and I felt like I was about to puke and instead I just started bawling out crying so hard I was so heartbroken it was like my first time really feeling that so that was that was fun next boyfriend B met him at high school that one didn't last very long but he was this very very good looking man okay so let me just say that you know me during this time i will admit is you know physical appearance pretty shallow you know just looking at who's cute and i met boyfriend b when he was new to the high school and he <laughs> about to say something so demeaning and I'm not gonna say it so I caught myself I, ca I caught that thought process and I'm throwing it away because that was wrong anyway that's what growth looks like <laughs> um boyfriend B came in hanging out with some friends that I knew of came over there my hair was like bleached I looked terrible and he was a little bit older than me and I recognized that, you know, oh, this man is very conventionally attractive. Like he was, other than the fact that he was new to the high school, kind of like he was coming back from a different high school and a lot of the seniors in this high school already knew him. So a lot of people, seniors knew him and everybody else he was new to. And so he was just like a new eye candy basically. And we started talking because again, met him through mutual friends and we kind of just vibed with each other. And like four days into our conversation, he was like, hey, you know, I know I'm going to end up asking you out eventually. I might as well ask you out now. And I was like, <laughs> fair enough. I mean, I think you're cute and we're having some good conversation. You making me laugh. So, yeah, let's go. And I will say that the shallow, I was very, uh, I want the shallow part of me was definitely more, uh, what's the word? Present <laughs> in my mindset back then, but I'm not gonna lie, dating him, even though it didn't last that long, but like holding hands and being together felt slightly like a flex, just like a little bit because of how popular he was. So it was just like, he he he, yeah. Again, it didn't last that long because I actually broke up with him because I met boyfriend C. Terrible, I know, but like he was really cool. Boyfriend B was really cool. Self-reflecting that I do feel bad. Uh, I feel like I, if anything, I mean, I don't regret anything, but if I could relive that and tell young Jess, be like, hey, just chill and really talk with this dude and just get to know him better, you know, before getting into a relationship. For the most part, he was chill, he was cool. We didn't really do much, we held hands, we hung out here and there, we would talk on the phone and text all the time, and that relationship lasted for like two weeks. Boyfriend C, met boyfriend C at a party. Boyfriend C went to school with my old friends at a different, at the previous public school that I went to. And I, uh, I hadn't seen them in a really long time, so I would stalk them on Facebook and I would see boyfriend C 
in some of their photos and I was like who's that guy that specific guy and when I say specific guy because this person has a twin brother um, but specifically him I was like him yeah I want him as my boyfriend he is very attractive and I never thought I was ever going to meet him I go to a party with all of my past friends and meet boyfriend C at the party and oh also I just want to mention that I was still technically in a relationship with boyfriend B during this time because during that time I was texting boyfriend B at the party anyway not important and when I saw boyfriend C I was like we made eye contact we were vibing with each other from afar he was really really shy I was really really nervous energy so I just kept talking and saying stupid stuff I was so cringy and he was just just you know vibing with my vibe my nervous vibe and uh, afterwards you know I uh, we started talking on Facebook we started connecting a little bit and he saw that I was in a relationship so he didn't try too hard to like flirt or anything but I knew that I was really vibing with boyfriend C's energy and interaction and so I was like boyfriend B I'm so sorry we need a break up but I would like to keep being friends and he was like oh okay boyfriend C and I that relationship lasted almost five years now there are definitely ups and downs we are not perfect I'm not perfect he's not perfect but the relationship did end because I did mess up and um, not specifically just because I did this one thing but also like there were a lot of things piling on to not necessarily the relationship but onto me and he did absolutely nothing to deserve the treatment that I definitely bestowed onto him. I felt that I expressed a bit of abusive uh, traits and toxic traits here and there where I could be very uh, manipulative and kind of controlling and I was just very insecure, very anxious and I wasn't aware of it so therefore it led to the downfall of that relationship. I did cheat and no, not proud of it. I regret it very much, and he didn't deserve it. He didn't do anything to deserve it. No one, let me just make this clear, I don't condone cheating whatsoever, and I will not speak on the topic of a physically horrifyingly abusive relationships because that is a much sensitive topic to speak on. But for right now, on any regular relationship, I don't condone cheating. Cheating is never okay. And so I knew that it was bad. I experienced it with boyfriend A, like, it doesn't feel good anyway I go into more detail about it in my first video vlog called I cheated and yes it's about boyfriend C and the whole cheating and why I did it and how it happened etc etc so during that time again just shortly put since I already talk about it more in detail in video I cheated basically that's pretty much it like he was a great guy uh, he deserved better, and I was very self-destructive. I lost a lot of self, I lost a lot of respect for myself, and I self-sabotaged like crazy near the end of that relationship. And here we are. <laughs> and that was almost a little over five years ago. And after that. <laughs> I definitely had like you know within all those relationships before and within them you know I've had boyfriends but I'm not gonna count them because it didn't feel like official or anything so that's why I'm leaving out a couple of memories and experiences I'm only talking about the ones I feel uh, stick out in my memory of romance yes anyway after boyfriend C and I have broke up and you know i had a lot of i would like to say healing i needed to do but that wasn't happening yet and so i wanted to experiment i honestly thought that you know boyfriend again boyfriend c was my first if you know what i mean and so he was the only one if you know what i mean and Afterwards, I was thinking, oh, yeah, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and have my oh, phase. Maybe. I didn't do any online dating. I've actually never used an online dating app before. I've always been kind of intrigued, but never had the opportunity. After I left that relationship, left, 
<laughs> I was pushed out of that relationship, really. I ended up being in a situationship, kind of, with a coworker at the time. I was 22 during this time. And this year was like the worst year of my life. That was fun. This entire like rest of that year, I was just very self-destructive, making toxic decisions and just being toxic to myself and my well-being. It was just a whole roller coaster of not great decisions and I'm not proud of it. So my situationship with, it's not even a boyfriend, it's more like man's D. Sorry, that was, that was unintentionally kind of funny because Man's D uh, was, again, a coworker that I ended up, we didn't really talk, honestly. Um, we just ended up hooking up and we were attracted to each other. We liked each other, kind of, and I was not in the place to be trying to find another boyfriend right after boyfriend see so but I was so lonely I was trying to fill the void so I was like you know boyfriend D maybe boyfriend D sorry man's G is like do D do <laughs> do D I can't I can't figure out a way to make something D sound pleasant so I'm sorry uh person D person D okay person D also was going through like a breakup of some sort so we were both just like not in a good place and we were both just basically using each other and um and we would we again we didn't really talk before we ended up hooking up we just kind of it just happened and it happened a couple of times and again like boyfriend b the shallow part of myself like you know was kind of feeling a little bit of legs because you know person d was uh very conventionally attractive and liked by many folks and and we were we were doing the <laughs> anyway and was i happy about it no, not really. Actually, I was I was very sad and lonely and the void was never filled during that whole entire interaction. So take that as you will. Next. So that never became a relationship actually. But during then I also did go on like two, three dates with a friend who had always had a crush on me. Very cute guy, very funny, very caring, very sweet, very gentlemanly. And so, you know, I was like, yeah, sure, let's do this. We're on a couple dates. He was really cool, really sweet, just wasn't feeling the vibes. Could not, per I could not foresee a relationship with this individual. So I was like, hey, man, I love you, but I don't think we can be more than just friends, unfortunately. And he was bummed by it, salty. And, but later on we ended up making up and you know, we're still friends to this day. So that's really cool Person D nothing ever came to that situation ship uh, Really actually it's kind of funny by the time that he was actually in a place to Properly date somebody I was finally in a place where I was like because a lot of stuff happened between us hooking up for the first time and then by the time we stopped and um, he was like, okay, I kind of want to actually date, pursue you. I was like, okay. I mean, I don't like anyone at this point. I am just kind of want to work on myself at this point. And he was like, yeah, let's go. I want to take you on a date. And I was like, okay, sure. Yeah, uh, I'm down. Didn't give him a date. Didn't give him a time. So I think he was just waiting for me. And during then, I was actually talking to my present partner. His name's Alex. And <laughs> uh, we were already talking. And I... You know that talking progressed and i started feeling you know i don't, I, don't, I guess feelings we started connecting really really well our chemistry was really great and we started we didn't start a relationship just yet but then i realized like oh crap i forgot about person d and uh, i told him hey i am so sorry for delaying my my answer to you but um 
you know what i thought about it i said the most terrible thing because i'm so bad at reject I, I, during that time i was so bad at being more self-aware of like what i should properly say and so what i did say i literally said to this person i was like hey you're the perfect guy for someone to date but you know i just want to be friends like why would i why would you say that jess i don't i don't know i felt really bad it doesn't matter you shouldn't say that what i should have said self-reflecting back was hey i appreciate you and i'm flattered but i am don't i don't want to pursue a relationship with you and that is that but please i wish you luck and i know you'll find somebody soon not that you're the perfect person to date like what the hell is that like what <laughs> it is what it is it already happened and I'm having a brain fart right now. He felt salty a good bit, especially after finding out that I was in a new relationship not too long after I had rejected him on Facebook. So that was that was fun. Back then, during that whole whole thing, I will say, you know, again, self reflecting on it, I was insecure anxious, lonely, depressed, and I was looking to him and looking just for any kind of validation to fill that void that I was experiencing and just didn't happen. And the void that needed to be filled was needed to be filled by me. Da da. I know it's so deep, right? But it takes time. It's hard. Unfortunately, I hate that a lot of people, including myself, had to go through what I went through to get to the place that I am now to become the person that I am now. It sucks. If I could go back and not go through certain things, I totally would. There are things I regret and wish I didn't experience, but it is what it is. And all I can do is learn from those experiences and change. And there are a lot of mistakes that I have made. And also, there are a lot of great things, uh, decisions that I've made, okay? So it's not all just bad. But the whole point of this video is self-reflecting. Um, but I will say that I'm still thankful for these experiences. Not, not every single experience. But I'm thankful for most of the experiences. And, you know, I am who I am. And I also learned whenever I said I thought I'd have my phase. Um, I quickly learned that I really didn't care. I, I just am not a sexual person if that makes sense but that's also because i am demisexual i am demisexual straight demisexual i'm hetero de demisexual basically and what that entails is i do not feel sexual attraction and or um i don't get turned on basically based on just looks and one good time uh, i have to have like a literal close deep connection with another person in order in order <laughs> in order for me to wanna <laughs> you know to want to do the tango genuinely like i can definitely do the tango without being in the mood which is kind of what happened with person d i was just lonely so there's that so the the oh, phase never really happened because I never like seeked it out because I come to realize that you know I just didn't want to I just wasn't seeking I wasn't seeking sexual activity and sexual connection I was just seeking connect connect connection <laughs> present partner Alex we have been together for almost five years now and I was just telling him this the other day, but I was just reminiscing and self-reflecting on the fact that I genuinely am still shocked to this day that I am in the place that I'm in. I'm in the relationship that I'm in because of the previous relationship, not um, my friend or person D, but a uh, boyfriend C, you know, that was such a long committed relationship. It ended so poorly. And I just, you know, I was very down in the dumps. I was very just giving up, basically. Basically. 
And I just never thought that I would be in another relationship, committed relationship, let alone a very healthy and thriving one. So honestly, like I still to this day, I'm like, it's almost our five year and previous relationship almost uh, lasted for five years, but ended before that. Part of me is like, something's going to go wrong. I just know it. But no, seriously, though, like, because previous uh, relationship, there were a lot of different scenarios and situations piling. And um, nowadays, in my present relationship, we're very open and transparent and communicative in this relationship, you know. And what very much helps, though, is being able to self-reflect on all of my previous relationships and learning from it. Therefore, my present relationship is definitely not just me, but also both of us doing the work to on ourselves to be better people for each other uh, and for ourselves. And so what that consists of is that, you know, I'm definitely way better compared to my previous relationship. I'm way better about communicating. I'm way better at catching myself when I'm having a toxic or negative thought. And I'm not perfect. I'm still doing work. And that's the point. And and that's the beauty of it is being able to be vulnerable and open about these situations and mental health and well-being. And so... I catch myself when I feel jealous or insecure and I'm able to openly talk about it with my partner. There are times where it's hard because again, back then I was so bad about wanting to talk about and be vulnerable and honest about with my feelings and emotions because growing up, that's just not something that I'm used to. My emotions, especially sad and negative ones were always shot down and like shrugged off and so I never knew what to do with my sad negative emotions and therefore I just didn't know how to handle them and I went about them in very unhealthy ways very unhealthy ways and I am very happy to be the person that I am today where you know I can very openly say hey to my partner I'm feeling insecure even though I really don't want to tell him I want to like cope the way I used to which you know, relying on old coping mechanisms can be, depending on what they are, can be fine. But again, depending on what it is and the extreme level of it. But I will do myself, do, I will do what I can by pushing myself to tell my partner, hey, yeah, I'm feeling insecure. And he's like, oh no, why? What is it that's triggering it? And sometimes It's like, I don't really know. And other times I do know. I do know specifically the one little thing that triggered and created the insecurity that's inside me. And there are times where I'll tell him, I kind of want to be self-destructive because I'm feeling insecure and whatnot. And he'll be like, hey, yeah, let's have this conversation. Let's talk about it. And so with that being said, and the same goes for him as well, you know, I feel that he feels comfortable enough to be vulnerable and have these conversations with me for himself as well. Granted, I'm way more of an emotional person than he is. And he is like almost kind of the opposite of me where like he is way better about just not caring about very trivial, small things that don't necessarily matter. And not to say that, you know, like that's another thing we tend to work on though, of course, is being able to moderately not care about like certain things and then being able to still validate each other's feelings, of course, depending on what the situation is. And even if it seems silly, you know, we try our best, we're not perfect, but that's what makes our relationship right now so great is because we know that we're not perfect and we openly talk about it and we have those really deep tough conversations that are uncomfortable but slowly progressively we become more comfortable enough to have them there's that phrase where you know i I said this before in a different video where once a cheater always a cheater i don't agree with that phrase whatsoever i do believe that when someone cheats and they extremely regret it and really self-reflect on it and just don't want to do that again It's very, 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 very possible for someone to not ever do it again. I, to this day, I know I've cheated before. That sucked. I regret it so bad. I would never want to make anyone, my present, my previous partner and my present partner ever feel that way. You know, I wish I didn't make my previous partner feel that way. I 
I can, I can go on and on about how much I regretted it, but I have learned to finally forgive myself because what, that was suckish and I shouldn't have done that and that was a bad thing that I did. That was a bad thing that I did. And, you know, my partner knows about it. I told him before we started dating, I was like, hey, here's my, here's my situation first. Let you know that I've cheated in my previous relationship. I have ha experienced this kind of traumatic experience. All this, here's all my dirt. I just need you to know before we start dating so that you are aware of what you're about to get into, <laughs> you know, what, what you're signing for. And so that was a great way to start off our relationship with all that transparency. I truly am so very thankful for my present partner. I, I can't even describe how thankful I am to him. He's been so very encouraging and supportive and comforting to me and my well-being and my mental health. I feel way more confident, more secure in myself and and more loving on myself not just because of him but because he's been able to give me that space to do that for myself throughout our relationship and that's also what i want to do for him and i feel that that's the key a very healthy secure relationship is being able to give each other that space and room to grow and be vulnerable and be confident and be secure and also be insecure be you know, sad and everything, just to feel all the emotions and respect it and just be present for it and do what we can to help each other out when we can. So that is my relate my uh, <laughs> relationship stories, everything that I've experienced in my life when it comes to being romantic with other people and my self-reflection on all of that so i hope you enjoyed listening and watching if you are watching i'm very happy i'm in a much better place that i've ever been in my life and my partner does so much and i definitely try my best to do what i can in um in gratitude of him we just try to be better people for each other and ourselves and that is definitely a key to a healthy and successful relationship yeah 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 raz agrees <laughs> but raz also stated that he hopes that you have a great rest of your day thank you so much for watching and being a part uh, I hope that you take care of yourself because you deserve it. You really, really do. So do it. Take care of yourself. Drink water. Love yourself. And give yourself a hug because you deserve it. You really do. All right. Thank you so much. I hope to see you in the next video. And...